Data-driven insights are currently attracting a lot of interest with banking innovators. What exactly are they? What does it mean to be data-driven? And what does the bank of the future look like? I'm Nav Singh. I'm the head of marketing communications here at DXE Technology for the EMEA region. Joining me today is Andy Haig, head of banking capital markets at DXE Technology for the EMEA region. Andy, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome, Nav. Thank you for having me. So Andy, firstly, why do financial services companies struggle with data management? Um, so data, data management in its simplistic form, let's just break that down, right? So you need data to execute. Uh, you need data to evidence that you've executed. You need data to evidence the origination of the execution. And then more frequently, more, more, more recently, I should say, is that a greater focus on the data needed to derive how you're going to execute next in the market, which is where the focus around monetization sits. Now, if you kind of peel that back and we focus largely on the last point, um, to in order to, to use data to derive how you execute next or ultimately how you cross sell and you bring the new, the new products to bear onto the consumer, specifically around retail banking, you need a centralized view of the customer. There's many organizations that don't have that centralized view of the customer. Unsecured credit, credit lending, motor finance, asset, wealth, it's in different parts of the organization. Bringing it together is one problem. The container for that is another. Um, it's coming from a mixture of legacy and modern applications. Um, how you warehouse that, how you centralize that, the cost of hosting data, the cost of archiving data, the cost of and ensuring that that data is secure um, are all sort of big challenges into that into that melting pot. You know, largely, are you paying for data that you don't need, and therefore, you know, making sure that once you've got that centralised view of the data, before you can then work out how to then monetize it, do you trust that data? Is that data clean? So, you know, data is all parts of these 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 components. When we say around monetizing data. You know, it means it means many different layers. Thanks, Andy. So why are financial services companies facing such a challenge from the technology sector, specifically fintechs? Well, it's a it's a it's a not a new topic to be have a watchful eye on what the other technology houses or powerhouses do in terms of not bringing services to support the financial services arena, but maybe provide services themselves taking on financial services services in that in that ecosystem. Um, so that is obviously an area that the, the banks have been nervous about for years and it is, it is a bit of an old topic. Fintechs, if we look at it from, from that angle, you know, fintechs is financial services technology organizations. They have, uh, and again, it's not a new challenge to the industry. It's been going on for, for a number of years at least where they don't have legacy, they're quick to market, they're taking on uh, services, whether it's from loans to savings, they're introducing services into that ecosystem um, and they're doing it at pace. And, you know, they are ultimately, because of the lack of legacy that they've got to overcome, are driving the tempo of innovation. Now, um, with that though, you have uh, the banks themselves, you know, have the scale that the fintechs don't. You know, the fintechs themselves have got to overcome quite a bit of inertia to, to pull customers away from the, the big powerhouses themselves. So actually the onboarding costs are, are not cheap, even though the legacy costs are, are almost irrelevant. So there is a bit of a balance between the two and you're seeing, a, a, and you have done for a number of years as well, seeing the banks themselves acquire and take on those fintechs to bolt into their services because it's quicker time to market. So there is a bit of an ecosystem that sits between the two of them. So that's really interesting. What does success look like for a digital bank of the future? Well, the, the, the arms race is around, you know, open banking, mobile banking has been there for a long time as well, right? So again, these are all topics that just are part of the journey. Um, accessing any bank's features at any point in the day is, is now expected from consumers, right? So that those that are not in that place are going to are going to be victim to it. The um, the quest to to cross sell, you know, again feeding off the sort of past commentary around centralizing the customer. 
and then using that as a platform to work out the next product so you can cross sell to the platform is where all the banks are going. So it's, it's how quickly they can use AI, ML and other techniques to quickly get those products onto that customer as quick as possible to cross sell is going to be, is going to be the chase down. Now, once they've done that, you've then got to look at the core banking platforms and risk engines. So once you've identified the product, you can get it in front of that consumer quickly and competitively. You know, ultimately the kind of utopia in that space is, is almost zero time onboarding for any product. So you want a credit card, you go and onboard it straight away. You know, the, the, the speed in which those products are evolving based on the customer's um, situation, economic situation, you know, need to be um, sort of game changing really in order to, to keep those products relevant for the consumer market, which as we've seen over the last couple of years has been changing radically. With COVID, oil prices, cost of living increases. So they need to be able to remain current in the products that they push every minute of every day and manage loyalty as part of that. Now with technology companies eating into their market share, do you think traditional banks will exist in the near future? It's a very good question. We've seen we've seen the high streets significantly change over the last couple of years, and you've seen the emergence of banking hubs appear into the high streets, where actually a lot of banks are coming together, you know, to, to keep the real estate costs down, but keep that touch point to to certain types of consumers. You know, when we spoke before about the arms race to get uh, products quickly in front of the customers, that is going to be not the demise of the bank, but actually them chasing that goal is going to add a lot of pressures into the, into the banks themselves. You know, everybody's been, uh, and again, not an old new topic with the likes of Amazon, but, but think of the, the exchange, the marketplace. You know, at the moment, you know, the banks hold our data. Imagine a scenario where the marketplace holds our data. You know, some of it, it already does in a lot of comparison sites in terms of our credit rating. But actually, when customer or when the banks are able to release products quickly and almost zero time onboarding, the marketplace is kind of limitless. It can it can choose the best products between the different banks and onboard them to the customer instantly. You know, if you're if you're buying a holiday, it can recommend I don't know BA Amex card. If you're spending a lot of money around Tesco's, a Tesco's card. So actually, the marketplace as it has done in other industries, sit on top of the financial services arena, control and see the data. So actually the transactions flow through the marketplace. So it's actually better place to recommend a personal um, choice to the consumer that's leveraging the products that are put quickly into the marketplace by the banks. We'll see the banks distract or lose contact with their consumers, struggle really hard for, uh, for loyalty because of loyalty will sit in the marketplace if the marketplace is done correctly. And then it can really start to bring together what everybody wants, which is utility services, insurance, and become a financial services hub, um, rather than actually, you know, an online good experience from a bank. At the end of the day, the bank just sells their services. A marketplace has got complete choice, and that's where it's going to go. So with all of that in mind, how can DXE help? We help organizations with their application landscape strategy and journey, which is in unison with the path to cloud and making sure actually that path to cloud first and foremost is cloud right and gets the most value out of the cloud from a business case perspective. And that application strategy brings together all of our capability from engineering, and from SI and from consulting, where we are actually you know, um, the, the, the leading SIs around the niche financial services applications that typically make up that banking ecosystem. And within that application landscape, we interlock the data strategy that's part of that, the centralization of the customer, as we've been talking about, quickly helping organizations clean that data so they trust that data. So all of the energy really in monetizing that data and we bring our own toolkit into that capability um, specifically around AI and machine learning to get greater return on investment on technology spend 
to monetize and, and formulate those, those, those products to the market. We bring that all together. It's a combination of application capability, engineering capability, consulting capability, analytic capability, and our niche um, uh, ISV SI capability alongside with cloud because the emergence of the the the, the na cloud applications, native applications of focusing on data um, is, is, is what's going to really be the foundations of where the bank's application landscape is going to go. And underneath all of that, we secure the ecosystem for the customer around our cyber security. You know, it's a well-known fact, financial services, banking and insurance is the most one of the most targeted uh, areas for fraud and cyber. So not only do we help with the applications and the infrastructure and the cloud journey around it, we make sure it's watertight in terms of, in terms of cyber security. Thanks for joining us today, Andy, and for providing insights into the bank of the future. You're welcome. Uh, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the insights provided by Andy today for the bank of the future. Please reach out for any questions, challenges, or strategic solutions that you may want answers to. We're here to help. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.